Obsidian is a note-taking app recently updated to version 1.0, which moves it out of beta into an official release. The application can be downloaded on Windows, on Mac OS, and on Linux, and there is also a mobile version that you can download on both Android and iPhone. The application used on mobile is the same that's used on tablets and iPads. You can purchase a one-time payment Catalyst license, which gives you support and access to insider builds, which are essentially upcoming features. Or if you need, you can buy the commercial license, which gives you commercial use. There are two add-on services, Obsidian Sync, which allows you to sync your notes, your locally stored files between different devices this includes the files in your vault, but also the behind the scenes files for plugins and community plugins, which we'll go through in a minute in the video. And then there is Obsidian Publish, which allows you to push any note that you want to a public website that people can search through. You can have a look through my Obsidian Publish, link in the description below. Obsidian has a massive set of community plugins which add on features to the core Obsidian. I'm not going to go through all of the community plugins in this video because there are far too many features to go through. So I suggest having a look at my Obsidian playlist, link in the description, which goes through each plugin individually. Or at least the plugins I've gone through at the moment, and when I go through more plugins, they'll be added to the playlist. The Obsidian community is spread over the official Obsidian forum, which is a forum that goes through questions, answers, and different feature requests alongside release notes of public releases like the version point one and other insider builds and then there is the obsidian discord and i highly recommend you going in there because there are people at all levels right at the beginner to experts there are developers in there as well to talk about plugin development different community plugins how to add code queries every question you could have inside of obsidian will be answered in the discord somewhere if you want to purchase one of the add-on services like obsidian publish or obsidian sync and you have an educational account or a non-profit you can apply for a discount and that gives you a 40 percent discount off of publish or sync. This video covers the core fundamentals of the Obsidian application, but in my extended brain course, there is information about other setups, other workflows, and different nuanced use cases with community plugins, core plugins, and other features that Obsidian offers. My extended brain template set gives you startup vault to get you going, and more on that at the end of the video. So now getting into Obsidian, this is what's called the Vault Switcher. And a Vault is just a folder that's stored on your device, whether that's your phone, your laptop, your tablet, it's just a folder on your device with a .obsidian folder inside of it, making it an Obsidian Vault. You can create a Vault or a folder using the Quick Start button by creating a folder, by opening a folder already on your system, if you already have notes or already have an Obsidian Vault or already have a folder you want to be in Obsidian, you can open that folder. And later on, I'll show you how you can open up a Vault using Obsidian Sync if you have Obsidian Sync. In this case, I'm going to create a local Vault. I'm going to call it Masterclass Vault so I know what it is. Then in my documents, I'm going to find a location that I want the folder to be stored in. In this case, I have an external hard drive. I already have a couple of vaults in here. We've got a formula vault a plugin test vault and i'm going to create a masterclass vault inside of my external hard drive so select folder and you can see in the location we've got the e drive there if you put it inside of folders the entire path will show and now i have obsidian open and this is the folder that i've just created so if i look back into my documents i've got that masterclass vault folder that i just created because it's a vault I double click into it, I now have a dot obsidian folder. And this is what makes the folder an obsidian vault. If I double click inside of there, we've got the app information, appearance, core plugins, hotkeys, and workspaces, which again, I will go through in this video. On the left side of the screen, I have the files tab open, and this is the files core plugin. And this allows me to add a new note, add a folder, sort the files and folders and then expand and collapse those files and folders. So I've clicked and added a new note and now I have a new note inside of this folder called untitled and you can see in my documents it's actually created an untitled document. Don't be fooled by the Microsoft Word icon. This isn't a Word file. This is a markdown document. MD document, dot MD. If I rename the document to new name, it's actually going to rename that file. You can see it's just changed in the document. If I add a folder in the vault, you can see it's an untitled folder. I click out, it's now created a folder inside of my documents. So whatever happens inside of Obsidian happens in my documents. That's what locally stored means. 
The difference between a Markdown file, a text file, and a docx file is essentially the formatting that goes inside of the page. So in a Markdown file, if I push a hash key, it becomes a heading one. If I push two hash keys, it becomes a heading two. And the same principle goes all the way down to heading six. You can type things normally, just like a normal text editor. By pushing a dash key and then space, it will create a bulleted list. And at the end of the word, if you push enter, it then automatically creates another bullet. By pushing tab, it then indents that bullet creates an indentation line and then by pushing shift tab on a line it will move the tabbed point backward putting a one dot and then space adds a numbered list with the same principles but if I push a tab on a numbered list it will restart the count then when you shift tab it backwards it will then take the last number so this is one two and then we've got three because these four points are underneath two so essentially it's 2.1 2.2 2.3 and 2.4 the markdown for bolding text is to use stars. So two stars either side of a word will bold that word. But just like most other word processors, there are hotkeys so you can highlight the word and then push Control B if you're Windows. And that automatically adds the stars in for you so you don't have to remember the syntax. And then you have the bold word. For italics, it's the same process. Highlight the word, then Control I, and you can see it's added just the one star. And then you can combine that with Control B, Control I, and that puts three stars. So now it's bold and it so each file in obsidian uses markdown syntax and i will leave a cheat sheet for all of the markdown in the description below on the far left side of the screen you have a collapse button for the left side panel so you can collapse it or expand it and then you have the ribbon which is where all of the core plugin and community plugin buttons are stored which i'll go through later then in the bottom left we have the settings which i'll go through we have the help button and then access to the vault switch will be used to access Vault. But now when I open up the vault switcher, I have a recents panel and this is going to show me all of the recent vaults I've opened. When clicking on the three dots more options, you can reveal the vault in the system explorer. So it shows you where the vault is stored and you can see it's opened up this PC. It's opened up my external hard drive and this is where the vault is. You can rename the vault, but as you can see, you can only rename a vault if it's closed. I'm going to exit out the vault, get rid of vault and push enter. And now you can see it's successfully renamed the vault. And when we have a look at my system, you can see the folder has now been renamed. I can move the vault, which allows me to move the vault to any folder or any hard drive that I want. And then you can remove it from the list, which is this recents list. So if you've got lots of recently opened vaults, you can remove some of them to make it easier to navigate to the ones you actually want to use. So I'm going to click and open up my masterclass vault. If I go to the top of the files panel in the left sidebar, there's the sort order. So I can sort all the files and folders either A to Z, Z to A, modified time, new to old or old to new, and then created time, new to old, old to new. Now, if I click on the new name file and drag it into the untitled folder, you can see this button now says collapse all, so I can collapse all the folders or expand the folders. To drag this file outside of this folder, I would drag it into the masterclass vault folder, and now it's outside of it, and you can see if I hover over the folder, it says zero files, zero folders. Having created some files, I can click on a file, hold shift on my keyboard, and that will highlight all three files, and then I can click and drag them all into the folder. When you right click on a file, it gives you a context menu. Open in new tab, which opens up that file in a tab, so you can see at the top of the screen I have first note and first note. These are the exact same notes, so if I add something in this tab, it will also add those words to the first note because it's same note open twice. I can open to the right and that opens up another tab. So we have three tabs of first note open, but it's now in a different pane. If I remove the words in one pane, it will remove the words in the other one because it is the same file. It's the same note. When you look at the top of a pane, you'll see the amount of tabs you have in that pane. And if you click and drag on that pane, you can move it around. So if I drag this down the bottom, eventually it will become purple. I release and now I have three panes with one tab in each pane. So I can right click on the second note and open in new tab. Now I have the first note tab and second note tab in the top left pane first note in the bottom left pane and the first note in the right pane. Then I can drag any pane to any location in my workspace that I want. I can add it to another pane, I can add it in the side, at the bottom, and I can even add it in the sidebar. You can see the purple line at the top. If I drop it, the note is now in the sidebar that I can collapse 
and expand. If you right click and open in new window, it opens up the pane in a new obsidian window. So I can minimize one of my windows and have the other window open. Now I have two windows. I have the window on the left, the window on the right. I have one tab in the pane on the right. I have three different panes two different tabs, one tab and one tab. So for me, when I'm working on two screens, I'll have one window on one screen, one window on the other screen, and I can drag a tab from one window to the other window. And if I want to create a new pane, so now I have two panes in one window, three panes in the other window. There is also the rename button in the right click menu on the file, which allows you to rename the file from the files sidebar. But if you have the inline heading showing in the page, you can change the heading in the page, push enter, and it will change the file everywhere it's shown and inside of the files core plugin. You could also go to the top of the page, go to the breadcrumb and then change the name inside of there, push enter to save, and then it will change the instances in all of the files. Just to top it off, there is also a drop down menu in each tab. And in there, you can see you can rename the file name there as well. The next option is make a copy. And what this does is make a copy of the file. But in Obsidian, because you can't have the same file name, it will add a one or a two or a three to whatever instances of the file there are unless they're located in a different folder. If you do create a file and in the same folder have the same name, you will get a warning message saying there's already a file with the same name. So you need to add something to the name or just change it. The move to file moves the file to whatever selected folder you want to. There is the folder drop down. So in this case, I only have the root folder, which is this line. That's the main masterclass vault folder or the untitled folder that we have at the moment which is where it already is. Star option is only available because we have the star core plugin active. And go to the top of the screen. You can see there is the star core plugin panel. I can click that and there is the first note star. For ease of viewing, I'm going to click and drag this core plugin down the sidebar so it's actually at the bottom. Now I can see the files and the starred at the same time. If I star the second note, it will also go into this view, but inside the files, you can only sort the files and folders. You can't manually arrange the order. Whereas in the star panel, you can click and drag and rearrange the order to whatever you want. Very similar to like a favorites bar. The other core plugin activated by default in the left side panel is the search. And this searches through your entire vault for either a specific path a file, a tag, line, section, or something called rejects, most of which you won't need to know. Just type in a word and it will find it. So I've typed in first and it's coming up with the first note. Now, if I click in the right pane, this is now the active pane, the active tab. And if I click on one of the notes in the file system, it will then open that note in that pane. So if I click third note, it's opened here, not in any of the others. I've now added some words to the third note. I'm going to search for words and you can see the third note as words showing and this is the result. If this search is something I'm doing frequently, whether it's a tag search or something more complicated, you can star the search as well by using the star and star current search. Now I have a star panel of the files and the searches. I've now opened up the second note and added some amazing things. But if I right click on the second note, you can see merge entire file with this brings up a search for all the files in the vault. In this case, I want the first note. You can see it's showing me there and I want to merge the second note with the first note It's giving me a warning box saying that you're going to merge the second note to the first note. Are you sure you want to delete the second note? You can push merge and have this warning box pop up every time you ask to merge a note or merge and don't ask again. And that's the one I'm going to push. Now you can see in the files core plugin, the second note has been deleted and amazing words was in the second note, but now is in the first note because I've merged the two together. If I then click on the second note inside of the starred panel, I get a warning box right at the top that says cannot find a file because it's been deleted. So I'm going to right click and then remove from the starred panel. The other options in the file dropdown menu is to open in default app, show in the system explorer, which is where the files are stored. So in this case, the first note and third note are stored in the master class folder inside of my E drive, copy obsidian URL, which is the address to the file. You can see obsidian open. And then this is the file URL for this specific file. There's no real need to worry about that. And if you are worrying about that, I would suggest going into the discord community and asking about it. And then you can delete the file.
If we move over to the right side of Obsidian at the top, you can see there is another expand button, and that is because there is a right sidebar as well. And in the right sidebar, you have other default activated core plugins. You have the backlinks and outgoing links for the note that you're active on at the moment. That's the first note. Again, you can click and drag to reorganize these. So I'm going to drag the outgoing links down the bottom and then going to middle click on my mouse over third note. And that's created the note in a new tab, then drag it next to the first note. So I have first note and third note open. And now I want to link the third note to the first note. So I'm going to push two square brackets and that has opened up a search for the entire vault looking for all of the files at the moment there are only two but if i click on first note it has created an outgoing link in the third note you can see it's appeared in the outgoing links panel and it's going to the first note if i click in the first note there is no outgoing link because there's no link in this page but there is a backlink to the third note because there is something coming from the third note to the first note. Inside the backlinks panel, there are settings options. So at the top, you can collapse results, which means it only shows you the page the results are in. So if, for example, you have lots of links in one page, I go to the first note, you can see there's two results here. I don't want to see all of them because if there is a big note, with lots of links, this is going to get quite hectic for me personally. So I have mine collapsed. Then I can toggle the note open and see the results. On each specific result, you can show more context and that adds different lines in. So I can now see the entire page or you can go to the top and then show more context for all of the notes. And again, you can tick that off to close it back down again. There is the same sort order options inside of the backlinks panel. And then you can also search in the backlinks panel for something specific. Now I've just added the fourth note as a tab inside of this pane written exciting words and made an outgoing link to the first note. So when I'm in the first note, I have one backlink from the fourth note and two backlinks from the third note. And if I go into the search and type in exciting, it's looking through the backlink results, looking inside of the page and looking for the word exciting. So exciting is in the fourth note, which is why it's showing that result, but it's not in the third note. So it's not showing that result. If you have the name of a file, so you can see the name is first note and we've got first note here, this isn't linked. And if it's not linked, it will appear in the unlinks tab. So if I click in first note and the backlinks panel, click on unlinked mentions, the third note is appearing. When I untoggle that, you can see link me to first note and it's giving me a link button and that's going to create the link for me. So when I click it, it's now added this as a backlink for me to the first note or an outgoing link from the third note. If we take a look at that again, and instead of looking at the backlinks panel, we look at the unlinked panel, we still have the outgoing link to the first note, but there is also an unlinked mentions button in the outlinks panel. And if I click there, there is that first note that hasn't been linked yet. So I can click first note. And now it's created that link just like the backlinks panel. Moving across, we have the tags core plugin. The easiest way to add a tag is by pushing hash and straight after it adding the tag word you want. If you want to add a second word to the tag, you would need to add a symbol in between because if you push space, it starts typing. So if I want the word smart to be part of the tag, I can put a dash in between and now we have tag smart and that's going to appear in the tags pane. By clicking on a tag, it will add the tag to the search inside of the core plugin and then it will look for wherever that tag appears. Similar to the backlinks panel, the search pane also has some options at the top. One being case sensitive, so matching for capital letters. There is an explain search term, which can be helpful in this case, because now I know it's matching for tag, hashtag tag smart. The collapse result button, which does the same thing. There is then show more context, the same thing as the backlinks sort order, but then we have a copy search result. And this gives you the search results for you to copy into another page, into an email, into another document. And if it's inside of Obsidian, you can actually add the wiki links. So those two brackets for the search, you can add those links in there. Now, when you copy the results and paste it in the page, it automatically adds the link. Looking back at the tags, you can add a sub tag by putting a slash in between words. Then I have a smart top level tag and a smart sub tag. And if we look in the tag pane, you can see the show nested tags option is automatically enabled. 
So it will fold the sub tags underneath. If you tick this off, it will show them all like this. The sort order is a little different. You still have A to Z, but you can sort by frequency. So if there are lots of tags, it goes to the top for high or not so many low, and you can reverse that order. And just like the files core plugin, you have a collapse all and expand all button at the top. Once you have tags inside of your vault, when you push hash, it gives you an auto drop down box of all the tags in your vault. So I can push down on my arrow keys and then enter and then automatically add the smart person tag. This is the core functionality of what tags are and what they do, but it does go much beyond this, especially when you start using community plugins. I recently went through Tag Wrangler, which I'll show uh, over on that side of the screen at the top for you to go a little bit deeper. The other core plugin that is automatically enabled is the outline core plugin. And the outline plugin gives you an outline of where all the headings are. So this is a heading one, you can see by the one hash and the space start and this is a heading two two hashes and a space second then i can click on that and it will navigate me to that part of the page if for whatever reason your headings are in the wrong order you could highlight everything cut and paste it or you could use the outline plugin click drag drop and it moves everything underneath their heading headings included to wherever you've dragged it to and even if you've got the same page open twice so we've got third note and third note I'm active in this page because I've clicked in this page and pushed review, it will take me to that part of the page and not move me on the other side. Now at the moment we've been in what's called live preview, so we've been looking at all of these pages in live preview, you can tell by the icon at the top of each page. But if we go down to the status bar at the bottom right of your screen you'll see a pencil and that says live preview, if you click on it, it will then give you two other options. One says reading, one says source mode. When you click on source mode, it will show you all of the different syntax, so the hashes, the brackets, and everything else inside of the page will show you that at all times. If you click on the reading view, it will get rid of all the brackets, get rid of all the formatting, and actually render some of the things like footnotes inside of Obsidian, but you can't edit anything in this view. Now when I add a footnote in the live preview page, you can see the footnote information, you can see the brackets, I've got the hat, symbol to signify it's being a footnote and they have what the footnote is underneath it making sure there's a space blank line so it knows this is a footnote but in the reading view I have the actual rendered footnote so there's one I push on one it takes me to that note and if I push on the arrow it takes me back to where the footnote was and with the footnotes if I add some words in for the footnote so big source big source it will still give me the numbers down the page so one two etc doing the same thing when I include an inline footnote it still adds the number and allows me to navigate backwards and forwards you may also notice in the status bar the word backlinks and what that does is it opens the backlinks panel the core plugin panel for the page that you are on. And then there is the word count and character count for the page again that you're actively on. So if you click on different pages, it will change the number. When you right click on a tab, you get lots of different options, many of which we've already gone through, but there are some different ones. So you can close the tab down, also just by pushing the cross. You can pin the tab, which means if you try and open up a page or you close down lots of pages, the pin tab will stay there. So if I try and open the fourth note, it will move it to the next available tab, which was the third note that was open. I'm now going to unpin that. The link with tab option works with the same page. If I click link with tab, I can then link. So at the moment it's the fourth note. If I click link with tag on here, you can see the purple link. But now when I click here and scroll down, it's changed this to the third note because it's linked tabs together so they are the same note and to unlink them just like unpinning them instead of right clicking you can just left click on the icon the backlinks in document mimics the backlinks panel that's in the core plugin in the sidebar in the page so if i go to the bottom you can see this is the backlink result of the document if i open up a different file the backlinks in document stays to the file i'm looking at so i need to right click and backlinks in document in this file as well if i want it to be in here there is a reading view and source mode option in here as well as down the bottom right and in the page the move to new window button moves the page to a new window instead of dragging it you can click move to new window now it's in a separate window and i can drag the tab back into this window i split right and split down which essentially opens the page up to twice either in the right or underneath one another like that the rename move file star merge we've gone through from the files plugin there is then the find and then replace options which is your typical find a word 
replace the word that you found. You can replace one, replace all, look for previous words or look for all of the words that you searched for. If I type in the word great, you can see it's slowly outlining the word and it's appeared down here. I can then push all and now it's highlighted all of the places great appears. Export to PDF does exactly what it says. It exports the file to a PDF, giving you some options. Include the file name as title, change the page size, A345 legal letter tabloid, make it landscape or not, leave the margins default, minimal or none. And when you push export to PDF, it gives you the save option, in which case I'm just going to save it in there. So I'm exporting the third note to a PDF file and save. And it's exported the document with the footnotes still functional. So you can still click on the buttons and go backwards and forwards. Open in default app in System Explorer, we've gone through already from the files core plugin, but reveal file navigation highlights where the file is in the files plugin. And that is more specific than clicking on the folder location inside of the breadcrumb because the folder location highlights the folder, not the file. We then have the open linked views and we've got the backlinks outgoing and outline plugins already in the right sidebar over here. But the local graph is something a bit different. And what the local graph does is show all of the notes linked to the note we clicked on. So at the moment, you can see it's linked to the third note. This graph view is linked to the third note. And it's got a line going between the two because they either have an outgoing link or a backlink to the first note, maybe even both. We can go to the settings of the local graph, search for a file. We can then increase the depth. So at the moment, it's looking for direct connections. If I increase that depth to two, something else has appeared. So it's now not just looking for the direct link. So this is the one link, it's directly linked. The first note's directly linked to the third note, but it's also looking for the second depth. So what is linked to the first note, in this case, the fourth note. And that depth can go to three, four, or five, and then you have the global graph view, which shows your entire vault. I personally don't use the local graph or the global graph because it's far too hectic in my vault. Now we're in the third note and you can see in the backlinks panel there are no backlinks to the third note, but we do have an outgoing link to the first note, which is why the first note appears. If I get rid of the outgoing links toggle, the first note disappears because now it's not looking, this graph view isn't looking for the outgoing links, it's looking for incoming links. If I then go to the fourth note, put in the two square brackets and find the third note enter, you can see it's now going to appear in here because we're looking for the incoming links of the third note. And just to clarify, if I go to the third note, now in the backlinks panel, we have a fourth note because that's the link we've just made and now it's appearing in the local graph view. So for clarity, the incoming links is the backlinks. And if I turn that off and turn on outgoing links, that's the outgoing links inside of the third note. If I turn them both on and then click on neighboring links, you can see that line appeared between fourth and first. And that is because there is a link between the fourth note and the first note. And when we look at the fourth note, there is a link to the first note. And that is what that line is there for. I can then tick on tags and show the tag. So this is the tag that I've created and it's in the first note and in the third note. I can add attachments, but at the moment we don't have any attachments in the vault, so that's not going to show anything. And then I can show or hide existing files only. But you might be asking, how can you find a file that hasn't been created yet? Well, if you push the two square brackets and type in something, in this case, the fifth note, it's not actually a note. And when I hover over, you can see the faded goes bold or highlighted, so I can create the note if I want. But at the moment, it's not a note. You can see in my system, I've got a first, a fourth, a third, but there's no fifth note. But it has appeared in the local graph as a faded out note. And if I click on it, it will create that note. Or I can hide it and say existing files only. The grouping feature inside of the local graph allows you to search using all of the searches. So that's for the path, file name, for a tag, line, search, and any of the rejects. You can search for something. If I search for the word note, it will then add whatever color I choose and I can select any color, literally any color, and it will change the color of all of those results in the local graph. So you can see fourth note has got note in it, first note has got note in it, the third note is the active note, which is why it's the purple color. So now I've changed the search to fourth, it's only showing the fourth as red. And you can add as many groups as you want and it will take a hierarchy going top to bottom. So it's looking for fourth, which is fourth, and then it's looking for note. So 
the note is yellow. If it's the other way around and the note's first, well, this is note and this is note, so that's just the red. And then the yellow, well, that's already got a color because it's already got a group, so it's not going to recolor it. So that's something to keep in mind when you order the groups. Inside of the display options, you can change what you see, but inside of the page, you can scroll with your mouse to zoom in and to zoom out. You can click and drag the graph around. You can click on any of the nodes and drag the nodes around as well so it's very dynamic but you can add arrows so you can see the direction where the links are going so if we zoom in a bit you can see there are two notes going in so this has two backlinks because they are arrows going into the note and this fourth note doesn't have any arrows so it's got two outgoing links i can increase the node size and i can increase the link thickness so now when I zoom out you can see those arrows much clearer and the nodes are much larger and changing the text threshold means I can zoom in or zoom out less or more so if I move that all the way down you can see I can see the text if I move this all the way up I need to zoom in quite far before I can see the text. Then in the forces options, we can change the center force so you can see it's going to move out from the center. The repel force repels them away from one another or brings them closer to each other. The link force is similar but specifically on the links, so the back links and outgoing links. And then the link distance decreases or increases the link distance. But for me, I'm going to restore default settings because I don't want it. At the moment, this local graph is specific to the third note and it's linked, but I can click the button, click the icon to unlink it. Now, when I go to the fourth note it's got the local graph of the fourth note and because this is essentially just a pane i can drag this in the sidebar so i can drag this next to the outgoing links and now i have the local graph inside of the side panel when looking at the top of any file in the main view so not the sidebar not the left or right sidebar in the main view you'll see a more options three dot drop down menu and this is the exact same menu as when you right click on a tab but if you look just above the three dot menu you'll see a, a downwards arrow and when you click on that you can then activate what's called stack tabs and this drastically changes the way that you see obsidian so now we have notes going down the page we've got the third note title there fourth note title there and then we have the fourth note title again because i opened the page up and you can see it's kind of like a book folding and unfolding the tabs those familiar with obsidian this is essentially the sliding panes community plugin but now in the core set you can still drag the page so we can drag that down the bottom and now we have a tabs pane with tab stacks at the top i can add a new pane here and then i can drag that up into the sliding tabs option at the top and we've still got all of those tabs we can move them around just like you would expect but we still have the what i would call normal view of obsidian down the bottom when you are in the tab stacks view at the top you'll see a plus and that will allow you to add a new tab to the tab Stack. And if you haven't noticed yet, there are arrows at the top of every page that let you go forwards and backwards. So in this page, I have a navigate back, which goes to the first note. And then if I go back forwards, it goes to the fourth note. And what that is doing is it's saving the history of that specific pane. So I've used this one before, but this one I've just created, I haven't used it. So no new pages. If I click on the fourth, I now have this pane has a history. So I can go back to the third or forward to the, to the fourth. Going over to the left ribbon, we have some more core plugins. This was the final score plugin, search, etc. But these are in sidebars. This is the ribbon. The one at the top by default is the quick switcher. And this is the search of all of the files inside of the vault. So control enter opens up a tab next to the pane you have open. Or you can control alt enter to open it to the right. So control alt enter opens up a new pane new tab in a new pane to the right of the page you had open then you have shift create which creates a page with the name of whatever it is you've typed in so shift enter will create a page called first and in this case the default location is the vault folder now when i look at the quick switcher you can see i've got first which is in the vault folder and they have first note which is in the untitled folder but if I don't want to look at the search anymore, I can push the escape key and that will exit the quick switch. I'm going to delete this file from one of the many menus. I could be at the top right of the page. I could use the file explorer, but in my case, I'm just going to use the tab, right click, and then down the bottom, it's got delete file. I don't personally want to see this error box every time. So I'm going to say delete and don't ask again. That will be saved in the settings. Now I'm going to open up the 
graph view, which is very similar to the local graph, but this is the entire vault. So it's not specific to a page. When you compare the filters, you can see we've got tags, attachments, existing files, and orphans, whereas in the local graph, we've got some different options. And what are orphans, you may ask? If we create this fifth note, so I can click on it, left click on it, or I can middle click to open it in a new tab. At the moment, it has a link to the third note, and there is no outgoing links because we don't have any words in this. So I can click on the links menu to open up the third note. I can then delete this line. Now I can use the arrow to go back to the fifth note and you can see that backlink has disappeared. Then clicking on the graph view, this fifth note has no lines. So there's no incoming links, backlinks, or outgoing links. So if I click on this button, it hides that because it's an orphan. Orphans mean there's no connections. The display settings are exactly the same. But you do get a nice animate button in the global graph, which when you click, will very quickly, because I've only got three notes in here, animate all of the different dots you've got. And now I've turned the orphans back on, there's more notes. When I animate it, you can see it goes two, three, and four. And then the forces section are exactly the same. Then we have the open today's daily note, which is a core plugin that can be configured and we will change the settings later. But this automatically adds a note with the date at the top in your vault. You can see it's in the file system and this will change as the days go on. There is an insert templates button, which is a core plugin that at the moment we haven't configured to work right. So when we push it, nothing happens. I'll configure that later. And then we have the open commands palette. And this is where you can see every single command you can do in Obsidian. So all of the things we've gone through in the menus are in here all of the things you can do in the pages toggles zooms creates settings everything is in here and as you can see you can add a hotkey to every single command so going to the bottom left into the setting going to the hotkeys this is the exact same list of commands which we can search through but we can go over add command type any key on our keyboards but if the hotkey's already been taken it will say oh there's a hotkey taken and it says this hotkey conflicts with graph view so i can either change the add embed one or search for graph view and then click on the x to remove that one so now there's no conflict something worth noting here is some of these commands this one here for example is the backlinks core plugin and this is a command specific to that plugin so if you disable the backlinks plugin these commands will disappear same thing happens for community plugins that again i'm not going to go through in this video have a look at the course the extend brain course where i go into much more detail into obsidian or have a look at some of the other videos on the channel where i cover community plugins looking down this settings menu we've got two sections we've got an options section and a core plugins section now the core plugins is what we've gone through the backlinks panel was over on the right the command palette was over on the left ribbon daily notes was in the left ribbon we'll go into in a minute file recovery and this is your systems trash or recovery folder and it allows you to save look at snapshots and clear the history of all of the files so if you've deleted something by accident you can come into file recovery and then recover the file of course you could also go into your main systems trash or recycle folder and do it that way but this is just a native version inside of obsidian in the backlink settings you can have the backlinks in documents so previously i showed you how you could add them individually in a document but this one is a global setting so all of the backlinks will be in all of the documents in the command palette setting you can pin certain commands so when you search through the command you can click on one and that will pin it to the top now, when I go to the command palette, it's already at the top. You can see there's the pin icon, so I can see it straight away. And you can pin as, as many as you want. Obviously, don't go overboard. And then you can rearrange them by clicking and dragging and delete them using the X. So, to the Daily Notes plugin. This is a very basic core plugin that's used in Obsidian. There are lots of different ways you can iterate on this using something like the Templator or other templates. But for the core version, the basic version, you'll need a date format and you can see the reference sheet is linked to there. And this is just the year, month and then day. So if I type in day, day, month, month, year, 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 it will change the format to days, month and year. I personally would recommend keeping this the same because when you start using other community plugins, it prefers this format. It then gives you an option for the file location. So the daily note we made a minute ago went into the vault, went into the main vault. And at the moment, there's no other folder. There's the entitled folder and the vault folder. What I do is I have a journal folder and I just type in journal there and that will create the folder. So all of the daily notes my journal folder. You can then open the daily note on startup. So when you first open Obsidian, it can open up your daily note automatically. So you don't have to push that open daily note button. So I'm going to turn that on. And then we can add a template file, but we need to configure the template plugin first. But before we get there, we've got the note composer. And if you remember back earlier in the video, we merged a second note and a first note and we had an error box. 
and this is a setting to turn that error box back on. I personally keep it off. We can also add a template file when we're merging notes together. Again, we need to configure templates for that. And the text after extraction setting is when you highlight or you move certain text, you can either link to new file, embed the new file or none. So if we leave it to the link new file, highlight amazing things, right click, we've got the cut, copy, paste, paste as plain text as you would expect. And then down the bottom, extract current selection. I'm then going to use the daily note that we made through the daily note plugin. And it's replaced the words with a link to the note that it's gone to. Then if I go to the note, there are the words. If we change that to embed new file, do the same thing, highlight, right click, extract current selection and go to the daily note is done the same thing but you can see it's added an exclamation mark at the beginning of the link i can't zoom anymore this is as far as i can go but whenever you add an exclamation mark in front of a link it embeds it so now if i click on open link it opens up the daily note page and shows you amazing things if you were to go to the beginning of that link get rid of the exclamation mark you have the link just like it was previously then there is the none option which obviously when you highlight right click extract current selection it does the exact same thing but it doesn't leave anything in the first note it just moves it extracts it to the note you want it then when you go into a heading you have the exact same option so we've got extract this heading and it will take everything underneath the heading so let's move the start to the first note now when we go to the fifth note not the first note we've got the heading and then everything underneath page preview plugin can be active anywhere where there's a link so that could be the search backlinks outgoing links that's one setting the reading view editing view, files, graph view, and start. And what these toggles are, you can see up here, require control to trigger page preview. The live preview is an editing view, and in a moment, this is ticked. So I'm in a live preview page. When I hover over a link, nothing happens. If I hold control on my keyboard now, I can see the first note, and I can see a page preview of what the first note is. You've got a link, so I can open the note. I'm going to middle click on my mouse. It's opened it in a new tab. Now I have the first note. If I go back into the settings and then in the editing view, I could tick that off. So now I don't need to push control. Now I can hover over the first note without pushing anything and it shows me the link. I can do the same there, it shows me the link. If I turn them all off, now I can go into the file and it shows me the page. I can go into the start, it shows me the page. I go into the main editor, it shows me the page. I go to the backlinks, it shows me the page. And I go to the graph, it shows me the page. Oh, I think you get the point. The quick switcher settings, you can show existing only files. So if you remember from the graph view, you can have files that don't yet exist. So at the moment, we are showing all of those that don't yet exist. As we created the fifth note in the local graph view, I'm going to create a new file that doesn't exist. So we have the sixth note. Now when I go into the quick switcher and I search for sixth, on the side you can see there is an icon and it says not created yet. So if I select it, it will create it. But if I change the toggle in the settings, now that uncreated file doesn't show up. The show attachment settings is pretty obvious. If you have attachments, either show them or don't show them. I personally don't show my attachments in the quick switcher. And the most frequent attachments you'll have inside of your Obsidian is probably going to be images. I've just taken a screenshot and now I'm going to paste it into Obsidian. And you can see I've taken a screenshot of Obsidian, uh, but now it's embedded the image into this page because you've got the exclamation mark at the beginning of the link, and then you have a link to the page. Technically, it's a page, but it's actually an attachment. And you can see in the file explorer, I now have an attachment, a PNG file. We'll go through the file and link settings in a minute that will sort this mess. But now we're at the core plugin templates. The reason I emphasize core is because templater, a community plugin, is extremely popular and one that I use over templates. But very similar to the daily notes, we need to actually locate a folder. So I'm going to call it templates. I'm going to keep the date format as the default year, month, day. And I'm also going to keep the time format exactly the same. Now I need to actually make that folder. So click on the plus and new folder, templates, enter. If I right click on the folder and add a new note, it will add a new note to the templates folder. I'm going to call it daily note template because I'm really original. I'm going to add two curly brackets and type in date. I'm going to create the journal folder for the daily notes plugin to recognize. Now when I push the open today's daily note button, go back to the daily notes plugin and now we've got the template folder. We can come into here, file location, and we can say, well, actually it's the daily template in the template folder. I can push the open today's daily note and it will create a daily note. Insert today's date, 
Yes, it's the same as the date file, but that's just proof of concept. And it's created it in the journal folder. You can see it's there and it doesn't think it's a duplicate because they're in different folder locations. If I drag this file into the journal folder, you can see it's now got a one on it. I'm going to right click and delete file, but templates are just files inside of Obsidian. So this as a template, if I middle click, it opens it up. This at the moment as a template is just inputting that. All it's doing, it's inputting today's date. If I'm in the first note and activate the template plugin, which is this button right here, it's activated the daily template and inputted the date into the page. If I then add a second file in the templates folder, so I've now got two templates and try and do the same thing by inserting a template and then get an option, a drop down option. You've got these two templates. Which one do you want to use? Now, we're going to use daily note because the second one's got nothing in it. And this means you can add lots of different templates for lots of different reasons. And in the description, I have a link to my starter vault, which has lots of different templates I've used in the past that may help you get started with using the template core plugin. So let's sort out this file situation with the image. We have the file and links settings tab. This is where the confirm file deletion. So when that error box popped up when I tried to delete something earlier in the video, this is the setting to turn it back on if I want to. I can choose where deleted files go, whether I move them to a system trash, move them to the obsidian trash folder or permanently delete them. I move them to systems trash to make sure I have them in the recycle bin just in case. The automatically update internal links setting, you can actually check to see if you want it inside of a page. I'm currently in the third note and if I get rid of note in the title and put enter, it gives me a warning. Do you want to update internal links that this file is linked to? This will affect one link in one file. So essentially any time that third note has been linked in any of those square brackets, it's saying, well, this has changed. Do you want to change the link or not always update just once or do not update now i always update because i want it to do automatically in the background and you can see now file and links is now ticked on at the moment every time we create a note it's being put in the vault folder so that's the master class vault folder but i can select same folder as current file so when i create a file and i'm already in a folder system it can create it there or in the folder specified below, which is what I personally use. Now I'm going to right click on Untitled, Rename, call it Notes, and now I can go folder to create new notes in, I can go to my notes folder. The new link format has three different settings. You've got shortest path, relative and absolute. I personally keep it on shortest path because that just links directly to the shortest path whatever note it is that you've linked. The relative path will look at where the note you're currently is in. So third is in the notes folder, and then we'll try and work out relative where the note is. So you need to go to the templates folder and then the daily notes template to get there. And the absolute path says, well, this is the absolute path. So you just go templates and daily note template. That's from the root. Use Wikilinks, just keep it on, it's just easier. Protect all file extensions means that if you have an Excel file or a Word file or a PDF file or something that doesn't end in .md, you can actually see it. Now I've created a blank worksheet, an Excel worksheet, but it's not showing in Obsidian right now, even though it's in that folder. I can then turn on detect all file extensions and now the Excel spreadsheet is showing. Now I can't open it in Obsidian, but I can click it and it will open up the worksheet in Excel. And what this allows me to do is essentially use Use the quick switcher and the search of Obsidian to navigate through my documents instead of having to go through my documents, or I can use the file explorer in any way I want and activate or open files that aren't just markdown. Then similar to the default location of notes, we have a default location of new attachments. So when we add a new screenshot, a new image or anything like that, it will at the moment go to the vault folder. We have similar options in the drop down as we did above, but if we go to the notes folder, right click, new folder, add an images folder, and then right click on the image folder, you can see set as attachment. Now when I go back into the settings, you can see it's actually said in the folder specified below and then notes images. So you don't have to go through the settings, you can just create the folder, right click, set attachments file. Then we have excluded files and basically every sort of search that you have, so quick switcher, search, graph view, this excludes them from the results. And if you have lots of templates, that's where I would put them in. I'm going to save that. Now when I open up the quick switcher, it's got excluded files. It doesn't mean I can't find them because I can still find the daily template. You can see it's there. It's just faded out. So if I push TE, you've got the notes that come up first and then the templates because they're excluded files are down the bottom slightly faded out. It's one way of prioritizing the results that you get inside of an Obsidian search. Moving on to the editor settings, you can change the default view for new tabs. So at the moment, it's the editing view and the editing view is either the source or the preview and you can see that option is down the bottom default editing view that can either be the live or source i would suggest live preview unless you want to see all of the source code but 
that's unlikely and or you could change it to reading view and only show the reading view again I personally leave it to editing view and live preview because I want to be able to see everything but also edit everything. Then we have the editor status. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, in the status bar, there is this option here, live preview, reading source mode and live preview. That right here in the status bar is this setting. So if I turn that off, it disappears. If I turn that back on, it reappears. Readable line length basically means whether it's the full width of the page or not. So at the moment it's ticked on and everything is in the middle. If I tick it off, it all goes over to the left side of the screen and now you can keep on typing. Trick line breaks affects reading view and I personally don't use reading view so I just keep it off. Front matter inside of Obsidian is very much like the properties of the page. When you go to the top of the page to add in front matter, YAML, metadata, whatever word you want to use, push three dashes then three dashes underneath then inside this front matter you can add properties into the page very similar to a notion database page the properties that would go in they go in up here one example of front matter information may be tags so if i add a tag in the page you can see it's appeared in the tags pane then when i go to the reading view it shows the metadata in the page that i can fold and unfold but if we turn the show front matter on it's now showing exactly what the front matter is and all the other front matter that you may have in a page to be honest you won't really need this to start with in obsidian and the only real use of using front matter is when you start using either community plugins or you start getting into using databases and other things like that inside of obsidian something else that could be useful in the front matter is something called aliases so if you type out a aliases with a colon next to it you can then list out an alias for this page this page is called third you can see in the breadcrumb or at the top of the tab which could also be written as third now when i go to the quick switcher i can type in a three and i've got the third alias which is appearing and i know it's an alias because there is the arrow on the far right underneath the alias you can see notes third that's the actual note it goes to so when i click on it it opens up this note so when i go to the fifth note use my control o hotkey for the quick switcher type in three it takes me to the third alias note click on that and it takes me to the third note another example of aliases that you may use inside of a page is when you go into a link you can use the pipe symbol which for me is shift and then just left of the z key bottom left of the keyboard and then type whatever you want and this is an inline alias so the link goes to the daily note template but it's going to show daily and as you can see there is a space so it does take spaces into consideration inside of what it shows so unlike tags you don't need to put an icon or anything in between you can just write daily note come out and going on and having said all that i still keep front matter off because i'm not in reading view. the fold headings and fold indent does exactly what it says it allows you to fold or toggle shut headings and indents so when i hover over a background you can see the arrow i can click on that and it folds everything underneath it because that's a heading and then if you have indentations you can hover over and you can do it without a bullet point or with a bullet point it doesn't matter and you can click three dots to open it up if you turn them off you can't do it show line number does exactly what it says it shows the line number that you're in i personally don't use this maybe programmers like it the indentation lines are the lines shown down here so we've indented there we've indented there line coming down and if you would close that off it stops the line toggling it off hides the lines right to left is from reading right to left which is just extremely confusing for me then we have the spell checker so we can turn that on now when we make a spelling mistake so i've missed an l i can right click and now i've got different options let's change it to hello in addition to the spell check if you click on the settings cog it actually shows you the dictionary so if you decide to make up a brand new word you can right click on the word and add to dictionary now when you go and have a look you can see there is your brand new word that yeah it's not a word so i'm going to delete it but that's a way of managing your spell check inside of your vault spell check languages for me is united kingdom but as you can see you can come in here and spell check to all over the place so pair brackets and auto pair markdown syntax means that when you put a bracket in so i'm going to type the open bracket it automatically adds the close bracket next to it and it does the same with the square brackets so when i add two square brackets it closes it out as well which means the link is added straight away and for the markdown syntax if i push one star it shows two and then i can type out turning the smart indent lists and indent using tabs off now when i use a bullet list and push enter it doesn't carry on that list and when i've created a numbered list and push enter again it doesn't carry on the list so i would personally keep them both on you can change the tab indent size but four spaces is average and is typical so i just keep it to four the auto convert html basically means that when you copy something from a web page that has html in it it will automatically convert it to markdown so it's easier to read but for me that's kind of a no-brainer yeah i'll keep that one on if you know what vim is and you know how to quit vim then you can activate vim if not don't worry about it and the 
Legacy Editor is a thing of the past, and if you're new to Obsidian, don't worry about it because it's not as good as Light Preview. Moving on to the Appearance tab, we have the base colour scheme, so you can use Dark Mode, Light Mode, or Adapter System. There is a light mode. Wow, I've been using dark mode for so long now, my eyes hurt. Uh, let's go back to dark mode. I used to be a light mode user, but I've been using dark mode for the last couple of weeks, and that's bright. We can change the accent color. So if you click on the color dot, you can change the accent color. And you can see everything else moving and shifting and changing. So if I go to green, come off, all of the different colors inside of the space are now green. But if you want to have a big overhaul of the way that you see things, you can add a community theme. And when you click on manage, you get the community themes list. Feel free to go through, add some themes. You can look for the installed themes you have. I only have the default theme, of course. And then you can go to light themes as well because there are light themes and dark themes. What I would say, though, is only start changing these when you're happy with Obsidian because you can spend hours tinkering. Once you've found a theme and clicked on a theme, it'll ask you to install and use. So now I've installed and I'm using the theme. When I go to my documents and go to the .obsidian folder, I've now got a themes folder. And inside the themes folder, I've got a minimal folder because that's the theme I installed. And there is the manifest file. So it's a JSON file. And then the CSS theme. So the cascading style sheet document that is the theme. So if you do want to go to the CSS and see what it's doing and learn programming, you can do, or you can just leave it there and it does its thing. Now, the minimal theme was developed by the same person that revamped the core Obsidian look, so they look very, very similar, but I'm going to go back to the default anyway. And because they are community themes, they are developed by people outside of the Obsidian core dev team, so you need to check for updates to see if there are anything, and you'll get a message, no theme updates found. But keep in mind that if you're using a community theme, it can override some of these other settings that you have in the core Obsidian. So you can manage the interface font, text font, monospace font, and the font size. You can see at the moment it's right the way at the top. And what I do is I use this quick font adjustment, which is essentially holding control and scrolling on my mouse, which is what I was doing earlier to zoom in so you could see what was going on, because by default it's quite zoomed out. So I'm going to zoom all the way back in again. I personally keep all three of these the same. So if we go into manage, you can then add a font and enter is the font name that I use. But if I leave it as a default for the moment, you can see I've got a dash and then a greater than, and it doesn't look very nice. But if I add enter, save now i've got the interface font as inter it now actually looks like an arrow and the same can be said for the equals and then greater than now i like consistency so i keep all three of these the same but you can customize them and change them and add any font that you want moving down to the advanced section we've got the zoom level and this zooms in or zooms out of the app so i'm going to zoom all the way out and now everything's extremely small and I can hardly see where the buttons are. And now I'm going to zoom all the way in and it looks like I'm completely blind. I'm only blind in one eye. So I'm going to restore to default. You have an inline title. So if I turn that off, you can see the title has disappeared from inside the page. We still have the title at the top of the tab and we still have the breadcrumb. But if I turn it back on, you can see there is the title inline the page, which is where we can edit it. Now inside of Obsidian, the tab title bar is what I would class as the breadcrumb. So you can see the tab title bar up here has now disappeared. And if I turn it back on, it now reappears. So if I click on notes, it then shows me that's the folder that we're in. And I keep this open because this is where I change the title. And when I scroll, it stays to the top, unlike the inline heading. Now native menus is disgusting for me because of Windows. But if I was to right click on there, it opens it up in my system. It's disgusting, so I don't do that. But Mac users, maybe you want to do that. But I'm going to turn that off. Translucent window doesn't really work very well because my um my back screen is orange, so it just, just doesn't look very nice. Might look nice for some. And then we have the window frame style. So at the moment, it's hidden, default. We have obsidian frame and native frame. What that does is change at the top. So at the moment, you can see it's just the tabs. If I go to the Obsidian format, I'm going to have to relaunch. It's opened my daily note because that's the daily note plugin setting. So it's opened here by default. It's now got the name of the note, the name of the vault, and then the version. If I change it to native frame, it essentially gives me the same thing, but it's native to my system, which is Windows, and I don't like this either. So I'm going to go back to hidden. Then right at the bottom of the appearance tab, we have the CSS snippets. Very similar to the community themes, but these are small snippets you can add to just add a couple of things in. If I click on the open snippets folder, I personally have a very small snippet. So if I double click, you can see what it is. And that is the entire file. Again, that's in the starter pack linked in description. But now if I reload the snippets folder, we've got the color theme snippet. And if I turn that on, it changes the colors to my nice orange. So it overrides the accent color and it also adds a line. So you can see my cursor blinking there. If I enter, it actually highlights a different color, the active line I'm on. What that means is I can easily navigate to where my cursor is because I can actually see it rather than it just being this blinking thing somewhere in this block of text. 
in the about section it's got funnily enough <laughs> about stuff so you've got the about the app you've got the installer version the current version you check for updates if you don't get them automatically but if you're like me and most other people you probably keep the automatic updates uh, ticked on then if you have a catalyst license you'll be able to receive inside a build which is the the pre-build stuff so this version one update there was actually version 16.12345 is inside a builds which you'll see in the release notes inside of obsidian you can change the language you can get help same as the help button down in the bottom left manage your account settings or sign into your account if you have a, an account inside of obsidian upgrade and activate commercial license all that sort of money stuff which i have a catalyst license not commercial don't need it so i paid 25 pounds uh, two years ago now and then i have the hardware accelerator on because i want it to be as good as possible so moving into the core plugins if you know what you're looking for you can go through the search but there are some plugins that aren't automatically added that you may want to use if you want to record yourself you can add an audio recorder and that will automatically add an audio file into your notes once you've recorded yourself. The format converter can be useful if you're converting notes from another application like Evernote, Notion, Roam, or something like that. It can convert the notes from whatever format they're in to something similar to Obsidian. The Obsidian Publish Core plugin is the paid publish plugin, so there's no point activating unless you're paying for publish. There is the random note plugin, which literally just opens a random note. You push it and opens a random note. I don't find a use for it, so I never use it. But the slash commands may come in useful, especially for those if you're moving from Notion or a, a tool that's similar. And what that means is when you push the slash inside of the note, it opens up the command palette. So that button over here that we push to get up all of those commands, you can actually do with the slash command in here. And this opens up all of the commands using the outgoing links, backlinks, and everything like that. There is then the slides core plugin, which allows you to present your Obsidian notes as slides. So you can write some words, add dividers all the way through, and to add a divider you push three dashes and then enter now i can either use the slash command to start the presentation use the command palette button in the ribbon push the hot key for the command palette or i can go into the actual page and then go into the three dots and go start presentation which gives me this very nice presentation there's the inline title because i didn't take it out and then we've got the next slide and then the next slide and i only made three slides so we're done and no, I don't use this, but you can see the plus button and the plus button works the exact same as the other hotkeys. If you want to add a hotkey, you can do. There is the unique note creator, which adds an ID on every note inside of the title. Again, I personally don't use this. This is more of a, a Zettelkasten cult type thing, but it's there. Then the workspaces plugin, which is amazing so what you're seeing here the organization of the core plugins the files the tabs everything like that that this is a workspace by clicking on manage workspace layout so i can save it i'm going to save as home now i'm going to come out of that i've now moved everything around you've got pages and side panels and outline plugins all over the place but i can click on the manage workspace button push on load home and it takes me back to my saved workspace of course all hotkeyable as well and I didn't forget sync. I was just saving it because I'm going to go into my vault to do this. Now we're inside of my vault for the moment. You can see we've got the same options. We've got the core plugins that I have active and then have the community plugins panel, which is currently what I have active at the moment as time of recording this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're interested in any of the community plugins, because I will do videos on them if I haven't already. But when I click into sync, I can then sync to a remote vault. I can choose a vault and my account has three different Vaults. You can have five on an account. My sync vault is there. That's my sister's sync vault. So I have one account. My sister has a sync vault. I have a sync vault. And this is a joint sync vault. You can choose for your vault to be password protected. And I do. So I'm not going to show you what it is. But you can protect your sync vault, which goes between different devices. Now, when I go into the sync settings, I've got loads of other buttons I can push. I'm going to add a device name and say desktop. So whenever something is changed on my desktop, that's what's recorded in the sync log. So now that I've just waited for my sync vault to reconnect, you can see down in the bottom right hand corner, a fully synced tick. And if I tick on that, it comes up with the sync log. And what it was basically doing is checking all of my local files with the cloud stored files, privately cloud stored files uh, to make sure that there were no changes. So it's going backwards and forwards between all the files and I've got around 5,000 notes. So took a bit of time. I can look at the deleted files and you can see all of the, the history files I've deleted. I can restore them if I want to, or I can bulk restore them. I can look at the sync activity, which is actually the same activity as I found in the bottom right hand corner where I clicked on the tick. There is an email support button, but most of the time I go into the Discord sync channel and <laughs> ask in there and I got a response within seconds from Lycat, one of the developers, main developers of Obsidian. So 
Discord's way quicker. Then there is the selective sync and the configuration sync options, which essentially customize what syncs. So we've got the excluded folders, which means I don't want to sync anything under this folder between the phone, tablet, devices, PC, desktop, who knows what. Um, but you can exclude folders very similar to the search. Sync images, sync audio, videos, PDFs, all other types. Now, I only sync images. I don't bother syncing any of the others because I use my phone and I don't want to read a PDF on my phone or watch videos or audio or anything like that on my phone, but you may want to. And then we have the vault configuration sync. So this syncs up main settings, appearance settings, and all the things that you would normally experience inside of your vault. So inside that dot obsidian folder, if these aren't synced, it won't be the same on the other device. And because I want the same experience, I'm going to tick them all on. So all the core plugins, the community plugins, the settings, the hotkeys, everything is on my phone and on my PC. And because this is changing the sync option for the app, you actually need to restart the app on all devices. So I'm just going to push X and then load Obsidian back up. And it's opened my daily note because that's my setting. Now, something else with Obsidian Sync is this file has a sync history, a, a version history. If I right click on the tab, I now have another button and it's view sync version history. Now I have all the changes of this specific file. Obviously it was created this morning, so there's not that many versions, but if I click on any, I can either copy to the clipboard, there was nothing in that one because I deleted everything, or I can restore this version. So if something changes or something deletes by accident, in which case this one, I accidentally deleted it on my phone and it synced to the PC. I was like, oh, don't do that. Uh, so I restored it. And if there are minor changes, you can go to the show diff option and tick that on. And now you can see, well, I've got rid of that line and I've added in that one. Very similar to Git, and I do use Obsidian Git, I've done a video on that previously, I think it's going to be above my face, uh, which is also very nice and I use that as a backup, but that's all of the conversation. As for Obsidian Publish, you can see this little, like, I don't know, flying plane icon thing, that's Obsidian Publish, and this is the Publish window. You can see I've made 1,320 changes today, I was doing some database stuff, so I've changed stuff in the journals and loads of notes, and all of those changes can be pushed. So I push the Publish button and, and it will all get published but I can select all, I can deselect all, I can go in and say, yes, I want to publish this one, or I don't want to publish that one. I can see the changes if I want, but for me, I just push publish. When you go into the site settings, you can add the site name. You can create a homepage, and I have a homepage of my notes, and that's what you'll see if you click the link in the description. It will take you to the homepage to navigate around. Add a logo, I don't bother. Add site collaboration, so if you work with someone else, you can add them to the publish vault so they can edit files as well. Add a custom domain, which I've done, so when you look at the address bar in my vault, it actually directs you to dannyhatcher.com, not the publish stuff. You can disallow search engine indexing if you want, but I will say that it's hard to find any of the files, like the actual Obsidian files, found in search because the indexing isn't great, SEO isn't great, so I use my website blog for actual blogs rather than publish, but people can still look through my notes. And the appearance settings are very similar to the default appearance settings, themes, and all the rest of it. And now I'm big, so I'm on my phone, you'll be able to see it on that side of the screen, and I'm going to push Obsidian. So I haven't opened it today, so this is the speed that Obsidian loads when you're opening it from fresh, and this is around 5,000 notes, loading vault, loading cache, loading workspace, and now it's popped up. So now I have my daily notes. If you've already opened up Obsidian, it's almost instantaneous. So if I just hold that down and then I push up Obsidian, bam, there we go. I'm I'm in my notes. Um, so the settings that I want to go through is when you go to the top left, you then get the side panel. And this is the left side panel you have inside of the desktop app. Push the back arrow, you've got File Explorer, Search, Tag Plane, Start, and then a note that I had there earlier. If you swipe to the left, you then get the right side bar and you can see it's working through sync. That's what the orange circle is because I synced up on my recently but you have the backlinks again another note i was playing with outline and then my daily note because i left it there earlier arguably one of the most important parts of using the mobile phone and the differences is the toolbar which you can see at the bottom of my screen if i go to the right go to the settings panel and click on the mobile options this is the toolbar so i can configure a quick action you can see right at the top there i'm moving it around so when i scroll my finger down scroll my finger down, swipe my finger down um it activates a quick action so that's any command in the command palette and swipe down and it opens today's daily note now i was already on today's daily notes so that was probably a bad example let's go to yesterday and now swipe down and now it's open today's daily note it was still loading the last daily note but it worked then you can add any command to the toolbar. So you can see we've got indent list, unindent, etc., etc. And as you can see down the bottom, I've got quick add. Now, quick add is a community plugin. I'm not going to go through it in this video, but it's a community plugin and it's a command I've added to the toolbar. And I can add that if I go all the way down, 
add global commands. You can see the tick on my phone and you can see the same page on my PC. I push the tick button, it opens up the quick add. Add a test task, I push OK. I'm gonna add in no priority, it's added test and it's already added into Obsidian PC. You can see it's so quick. <laughs> I didn't even get to see it pop up, it was just there. Anyway, so it's synced between my phone and my PC and that's added a test task just by using the mobile toolbar, the community plugin to add an icon to it and then the community plugin to add the command in there. But now I've got task management inside of Obsidian that syncs to my phone and PC. Sync on the phone, if you swipe to the right, it brings up the left menu, go into the settings menu, go scroll down to the sync in the core plugin section, you'll be able to see the sync menu. I've set the device name to phone so I know in the sync log that the sync is from my phone. But a setting on the phone that's going to come in handy is the prevent device sleep. So when it's syncing, sometimes if you've made loads of changes, your phone can take time to sync everything up, in which case, if your phone sleeps, it stops the sync. So what this does is it stops your phone from going to sleep while it's syncing. So you can leave it rather than having to push on your phone to keep it awake. Then as you scroll down, you have the selective sync and then the configuration sync in here as well. So if you don't push any of the buttons inside your phone, it won't sync any changes you've made on your phone to the PC version or any other device version that you have. If you have a sync account, you can create a synced vault. So if you click on the setup inside of the vault switcher, it will ask you which sync vault you want to sync to. In this case, I want it to be the Internet Academic Sync Vault. I can then create a folder on my system, a local folder on my system, test sync. I've put it in my E drive again. But now when I open up the vault, it goes straight into sync and says, hey, you're connected to the sync. Do you want to start syncing? And yes, I do. Now when I go to the manage remote vault settings, I can go to the manage sharing so the people and then I can add other people to this vault and I work with John and we do a podcast about personal knowledge management every Saturday link in description but John and I use a sync vault to communicate backwards and forwards with podcast episodes and things like that so everything in this vault is synced to his devices as well as mine as long as he's synced into <laughs> the vault. The biggest limitation with collaborative sync is it works just like normal sync so if you're both editing the same file at the same time it will take the most recent sync as the update so if for example I stop typing before John does John finishes John was the last update so whatever I wrote will be overwritten by his update. So you can't type at the same time. But that doesn't really matter if you're working on different pages. And if you're wondering why Obsidian Sync is different from the sync of other apps that use cloud, it's because Obsidian is offline, so it's syncing the files to the device, which means I can use Obsidian offline. I don't need the internet because the files are on my device. Then when I get internet access again, it syncs up between the devices. The one-time purchase extended brain course goes through the fundamentals of Obsidian, how those fundamentals impact my workflow, what my workflow looks like inside of Obsidian, the fundamentals of other tools that I use, such as Zotero, Morgan, and other research tools. But it also organizes my Obsidian-based content inside of the Obsidian Vault with the main channel videos and insider videos that's only for the course, explaining how some of the plugins work in more detail if you have specific nuanced questions. The one-time purchase extended brain template pack has multiple starter vaults you could use to get started, depending on what you're looking to focus on. So that could be business, it could be academia, it could be task management, or using the Parasystem for your notes and organization. As time goes on, updates happen, workflows change, tools get added, new tools come in, the course is updated, and you will get the update pushed to you as soon as they are released. But if you just want to ask questions, I do have a Discord that I'll link in the description below where you can ask questions about the course, about the templates, or about Obsidian and my workflow in general as a, an on online academic.